Welcome back, welcome back. And to part three of our How To series. So those of you that have been loving the Great British Sewing Bee, um, I absolutely have been addicted to. I've loved it. I think they're brilliant, aren't they? They're all so, so good this year. So good. I'm hoping that we get some of the faces on here as well. It'd be brilliant. But anyway, what we want to do is obviously, um, with the excitement of the Great British Sewing Bee, we want to do our very own how-to sort of demonstration. So as this week, they had the maxi dress, the 70s star maxi dress. Victoria Pete has made the most amazing maxi dress. So I had to put it on this morning. I absolutely love it. I'm off on my holidays tomorrow. So I've put it on now. And I might just say I'm stuck in it and can't take it off. I absolutely love it. So this is Victoria's maxi dress. It is beautiful, isn't it? The fabric is just gorgeous. And what we're going to do is we're going to break down um, lots of the different key elements and lots of different skills on making a dress. As well, it was the made to measure challenge, wasn't it? So how to adjust it to fit you as well. Um, let's start with the pattern. Okay, two different size variations. This is the one that I'm wearing, by the way, which is option um, C. This option. So eight to 16 to start with, which is this one. £9.99. The second image on the web has all of your breakdown, as always, the breakdown of the back of the packet. So if you do want to have a closer look at sizes, how much fabric you're going to need, etc. If you go onto our website, flick across to the um, to the second image and you can see that breakdown a bit clearer than on your telly screen. So you've got the three different options. This is lovely as well, isn't it? This is like the same sort of sleeves, the sweeping sleeves. We're going to talk with Victoria about lengthening and shortening as well, looking at the different lengths. And it, it is beautiful. I do love these wrap dresses. They're so gorgeous, aren't they? I said to Victoria this morning, I was looking at, um, I've been, this is the different size, by the way. We've, my mum and I have been hunting all of the different stores for Mother of the Bride outfits. And my mum, it's a summer wedding, so she doesn't really want that sort of traditional, quite stiff, with a jacket, Mother of the Bride look. She wants something more floaty. And I saw this this morning, I thought, this would be perfect got a commission Victoria to make my mum a mother of the bride dress because this is just brilliant isn't it I don't trust myself to have a go myself yet um, but maybe after today's show I might pluck up the courage to have a go Ooh. bearing in mind it was my mum that sent home the apron <laughs> that wasn't quite finished right after I made it for her I don't think she want me making her dress anyway a quarter of the stock to 18 to 22 has 24 sorry 18 to 24 has already gone into baskets straight away it's a gorgeous dress I think it's ever so flattering that's what they were saying on the sewing bee on Tuesday this dress hides a multiple um, a multitude of sins and remember, <laughs> I, I know that, um, who was it that was saying, oh, it was Mercedes. Mercedes was saying, you don't need to worry about shaving your legs. You don't need to worry about, you know, all of those sort of things. It's just so easy and lovely to wear. Put it on, you look elegant. We've also included another pattern, another maxi dress pattern. Do you recognise it? You may recognise it. That's all I'm saying. Again, in two different size variations. Same kind of skills in this one um, are relevant and we'll talk through them again with Victoria, but we're going to um, talk through skills that can be transferred across both patterns. This lovely sort of same bodice, but different styles across the board. A pattern you may have seen before. Hint, hint, hint. Okay, so that's the, maybe, maybe not. This is the six to 14. We've got it in the other size, which is 14 to 22. And just to remind you again, on the back of the packet has all of your breakdown of sizes and fabric requirements, which will be the second image on the website. And at the bottom here, you can see the different pattern variations and how they've got a similar sort of style bodice, but how they've mixed and matched the different sleeves and how you can create your own personalised maxi dress. The V-neck option. Okay, let's start with fabrics. Now, please, can we start with this one? I absolutely love this fabric. Isn't that so striking? It's called Cherry Jungle. I've not seen this before. It's 
absolutely gorgeous. It's a crepe. It's really beautiful. Do you know, I was thinking actually when I tried it on, it is slightly heavier than I thought. It's got a real beautiful quality to it. Really gorgeous. It's 142 centimetres wide. Half a metre is £5.99. 97% polyester. And then, interestingly, actually, it's 3% elastane. Just tiny, tiny stretch. It's not, it's not, it's not crazy stretch stretch. It's just got a tiny stretch to it, which is lovely. Um, premiere today, that's why I haven't seen it. Premiere, especially for this dress. <laughs> Thank you. Hannah's paid me a lot of compliments today, which is unusual for Hannah. What are you after, Hannah? Thank you. Okay. The one that Victoria has been working with is this one. Oh my word, this, oh no, it's not. It's that one, isn't it, that teal. This is beautiful. Do you know, I love this, and you could actually make the most beautiful sort of kimono wrap with this, using like the, the patterns as well. These are the colors for your wedding, for you, not your wedding. Hannah's, <laughs> Hannah's still a, a bit away from having a wedding, but she said she, is it, which of your friends is getting married? Miami, are you a bridesmaid? Yep, Hannah's a bridesmaid, and she says these are the sort of colours. I've got it the wrong way around. Been looking at dresses. If you've got a few bridesmaids, it really adds up. That's a beautiful colour, isn't it? Seven ninety nine. Again for your aqua spray crepe. That's one hundred percent polyester. It's crepe de chine, I should say. Actually, it's a crepe. It's got lovely um, soft touch. It's one hundred and forty eight centimetres wide, half a metre seven ninety nine. The navy blue. Maybe for a... I even think with winter, you know, winter weddings or even on holiday, that would look beautiful. If you don't want something as bright, 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 that's very elegant, isn't it? Four pounds, 49 and a half metre. Slightly different fabric here. Um, the crepe has got more of a sort of shine to it. 100% polyester, 150 centimetres wide. Lovely detail on that one. We've got the Paisley stylish print. Quite a vague description. You'll see in a second. Okay, the ones that have got um, a slight shine to them, I am just going to say for anybody that is maybe doing this after getting a bit of inspiration from Tuesday night's show and wants to have a go at a maxi dress, these ones, the slightly slippery ones, are harder to work with so i would advise somebody that's maybe more advanced on their um, dressmaking level to yeah by all means have a go i say paisley print it's more like do you know what it reminds me of it's it reminds me of um the mosaic place in barcelona it's got this gorgeous mosaic feel to it 100 percent polyester 150 wide see the one that i'm wearing is a crepe which is um probably going to be slightly easier to work with for example, than something like this. This is really beautifully um, silky. It does have a gorgeous touch to it, though. So if you are more skilled, I really, really would have a go. But obviously, it's softer touch. If you watch the show, they were they were saying this, weren't they? The silkier ones, obviously, they slip. Okay. Black leopard. Look at this. Hannah's saying, right, this is the one I want. This would make a gorgeous maxi dress. And monochrome, you cannot go wrong. Again, with that shine, 150 wide, 100% polyester, £4.49. That is beautiful, isn't it? I think this is brand new as well. Oh, just so you know, Christine, all of the widths of the fabric are on the website. I have been going through them as we go. Um, they're all sort of between 140 and 150 wide so far, but they're all on the website. If there's any in particular that you want me to recap, then let me know. This is the one that Victoria's got over on the other desk, which is, again, so pretty. <gasps> this one, you might need a lining. It's, it is more sheer, but, it, oh, it is amazing. We will introduce some linings later. That colour, look at the coral that's coming through. I wonder if my mum's watching. That's lovely. Or you could wear a slip underneath. It doesn't need to be fully lined, I suppose, does it? Line the bodice, probably, Victoria's saying. Six ninety nine and a half meter. How amazing was the uh, was Alexis dress as well? 
His was so good. You didn't think he was going to get it finished, did you, with the full lining? It looked amazing. I do love these big floaty sleeves. 145 wide. 100% uh, polyester. This is a Georgette with that lovely coral design. Floors like this are perfect for maxis. Maxis are so easy to wear. I will literally, I know on your holidays you just throw in your swimsuits and your um, and like your shorts and t-shirts. But I was saying to you, Hannah, yesterday, you have to then think of the top and everything. I literally will just pack, haven't even started to pack yet, even though I'll go tomorrow. Um, but I will just roll up loads of maxi dresses and they're so easy to just wear day to night, aren't they? These kind of wrap dresses as well, they're lovely to just put over your swimsuit, aren't they? Or, I mean, I've got my... Ah, yeah, so Hannah wears it over the top of an uh, outfit as a duster coat style. They're so versatile, aren't they? Crepe, blue smoke, smoke blue, sorry. What's the width of this one, sorry? 100 and 105, 145 wide. Are they cranes on there as well? A bit Japanese, I love it. And the last two, we're going to fly through these before we start over with Victoria. There's the navy and pink, and then we've got grey and pink to finish. Now this is a crepe. It's 100% polyester. 145 wide. Oh, look at that. They look like watercolours. Beautiful. So if you are thinking of something that isn't as bright, bright, bright colour, that's got that lovely navy background, still with the beautiful oriental pink. We sell by the half metre, by the way, so if you are multi-buying, if you do need to buy more than half a metre, just add how many units to your order. So if you want two metres, that's four units. If you want one metre, that's two units, and so on and so forth. And then, oh, this one's brand new for today as well. It is really pretty. A lot's gone straight into baskets. Um, and then the last one is your grey, again with that lovely oriental bright pink flower. That's lovely, isn't it? £3.99. Exactly the same as the other one, but with that lovely grey. That's going to look so pretty, isn't it? Again, brand new. Half a metre, just three pounds and 99 pence. Right, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take all of the patterns across to Victoria because the skills that we're going to learn in our how-to series, part three, uh, uh, they are relevant for both of the maxi dresses. So I'll take the patterns across with me. Let's go see Victoria. I love it. Isn't it amazing? Hello. And it looks oh. so brilliant on you. It looks oh, so lovely. thank you. Very jealous. It's gorgeous. When I, when I saw, you sent me a picture of this a few days ago, and when I saw it, I thought, I've got to wear that. I just absolutely Looks love so it. Looks so good. I love the big sleeves as well. I it's do as well, really, and especially really if you're lovely. going somewhere warm, a bit of air. So yeah, they're really, really forgiving, nice. aren't they? So, um, I just need to make you aware, just so you know, the larger size uh, variation of the one that I'm wearing, which is this one. There's more people that have it in baskets than we have available. So that's the one that's on your screen at the moment. So if you have got it in your basket, I urge you to check out. 8 to 16 is going along the bottom. And that one does have availability, but there is less than 20, just so you know. And so people know at home the size that I've made is a 12. OK. And you've wrapped that further than the pattern says to wrap it, if that okay. makes sense. So it was a bit tight on me and it's a bit too big on you so that's how the 12 comes okay. up size wise lovely so it, is, know. it is really beautifully comfortable um so we're going to do a bit of um uh skills yes yeah, skills based. and techniques have you been yeah. watching Great yeah. British oh, of, course. of course of course of course oh yeah. i loved the last i really love show. it but it just makes me so anxious <laughs> <laughs> you're watching oh, it the just time, being the time and i mean as a guest designer here we work to really tight deadlines yeah. but that's on another level i don't know how they do it they all cope survive. so well don't they <laughs> i really know hard. they're all brilliant uh, one I would struggle with the most is the challenge they do in the middle yeah. where it's here's a bunch of random stuff go and make something and I'd be like oh I need like a week oh, come you'd up be with amazing. an idea you'd you'd be panic. Amazing. absolute panic so I don't know how they do it what's the first skill then you want to so teach today us? Um, what I thought I'd do is just have a quick look at patterns themselves yeah um, in terms of um, 
what you see isn't always what you get, if that makes sense, okay. in that you've got a lot of flexibility. So, for example, this one here that you're wearing, um, this one comes with two different styles of top. So you've got the more kimono type sleeve yeah. and you've got a really loose um, sort of gathered fluttery yeah. type sleeve. Um, so this crepe that um, this one's been made of is definitely heavier mm -hmm. um, and it holds its shape a lot more. Um, the other fabrics are much more floaty mm -hmm. and will sit much closer to the skin. Right. Um, they won't sit out because you can see here on this one how this sticks out a little bit. The yeah. other fabrics will sit much flatter. Right. Um, but that lends itself beautifully to, to these sleeves. These sleeves will sit, they'll be really pretty, yeah. really beautiful sleeves. Um, and you've got your, um, your different skirt options, either where it's flat or whether you've added a, a ribbon type um, attachment. Um, on the other pattern that we've got, and this one was actually seen on air, I think it was um, Juliet that made this dress. So um, that's a really pretty option. She made this one here, I think. And that's these, again, those softer fabrics will work beautifully for this ruffling. Uh, these aren't ruffles, these are cut on a curve. Um, and then on this version here, you've got a ruffle down the front and you've got ruffles along the front. But you can mix and match. These are essentially made with the same bodice style, but this one, you've got the curved pieces that go, that decorate around the top. This version's got sleeves and a ruffle, and this version just got the sleeves. So it's all based on the same bodice. And then you've got your different skirt options, and we'll have a look at the skirt. So you can actually, whilst it says view A, B, and C, and D, oh, if you you're a bit more match. Yeah, yeah, if you're a bit more confident and you're happy reading instructions, you can flip between the instructions and the different yeah. steps to make something that's exactly how you want it to be. Got lots of opportunities there. So um, in terms of the pattern, I thought I would talk a little bit about altering the length of the pattern because um, a lot of the pattern companies make pe patterns for people who are very tall. Um, you'll see um, with Vix with this one, her the, I am, the skirt is portion long, show you. Um, is, and have you got a heel on as well? I've got a slight, a heel, slight on. heel on. I'm 5'3", five, oh, five, really. I do sound 5'4". I am actually 5'3". So this is just... Just a smidgen too long, I think. I have got a slight heel on. Yeah, I would look to reduce the height, okay. the, the length of that. And how sort of easy is that to do? So um, you've got two different places where you can adjust the pattern. Um, this one here is um, piece number 13, and this one was for that one for this pattern, but it's pretty much the same kind of skills that you would use um, for different skirt patterns. Um, this one, in the instructions, by the way, it says for piece 13, piece 13 and 13A. I think that's for the larger size pattern, not this one, because this one I didn't have to piece. This was all on one sheet. Um, but if you need to piece it, piece it first before you then alter it. But for this one, you've got the three different skirt styles, the skirt portion on the same pattern piece. So you've got the shorter one, the mid-length one with the curve, and then the full length flat one. So you've got the three different styles. So you would decide which one you're going to cut first, cut that size out, and then look at altering it. Uh, in terms of markings that you've got on your pattern, you've got a marking at the top here, which, is, um, uh, which says the waistline, and then you've got one further down here, which is the hip line. So you've got these two different measurements, and the hip line here will tell you for each of the size ranges what that finished hip line measurement is. If you're looking to measure the actual pattern itself, Remember, you're not measuring from the edge of the piece to the edge of the piece. You always need to take off your seam allowance, and I've drawn a green line here to take off the seam allowance, so you would actually measure from this point, mm -hmm. not the edge of the paper pattern. This one's slightly different because it's an overlapped skirt. Here they've mentioned the centre front line, right. where the centre front should sit on the body. This isn't a sewn line or a stitched line or anything, it's just there as a visual guide. So you would measure from here to here, you'd double that for the two halves and then you do the same measurement on the back of the skirt to just make sure that the measurement is right across the hip line of the of the skirt right what you can do is you can lengthen or shorten here there's two there's double lines that always donate uh, um, tell you where you can lengthen or shorten the the pattern you don't if you're particularly short you don't want to take out absolutely loads here because what you're doing is you're reducing the measurement between the waistline and the hip line so you can make a small alteration here if you're shorter or longer in the seat, okay. if you like. So that yeah. measurement between your waist and the widest part of your hip. Yeah. So you can alter that. But the place to do the rest of your measurements are at the bottom edge or on, you know, on your curved edges. So it kind of depends on where 
your height difference is. If you're taking um, measurement out of here, so you're making this a little bit shorter, you're a little bit shorter in the body, you can fold or you can cut and paste back on, but I'll just fold just to show you. So we're taking off, say, let's say about an inch-ish. Mm. But you can see what happens here is that you get a funny little ah, step. So do you need to draw your So what your you need own. to do is you need to get yourself a big fat ruler, and I've got a metre ruler at home. Um, or you can use something like the prim dressmaker's yeah. ruler. Stick a piece of paper underneath, and you want to smooth out this line between here and as far down on the pattern as you can. So you're not just... You're not just going there to there. Yeah, and no. you're not increasing this size okay. here. You're not chopping off this bit here. You're sort of gradually working that line back out. So I've got one end of my ruler at the top and one end at the bottom, and you'll just graduate that line. The further down you can do that, the better, because that evens it out. Okay. Um, but what you've got to bear in mind is what you do to the front, you need to do to the back. Right. Because otherwise you'll end up with the front of the dress, yeah. one measurement, That's and the back the, the other. So just double check and measure, get a tape measure out, a long ruler, whatever it is, just to double check that those seams absolutely match. Okay. And say, similar thing the other way, if you cut a line, you can spread those two apart, stick in a piece of paper. Again, you'll get a funny jaggedy edge, use your ruler to just Speed even out. out. If you are... Um, the ruler that Victoria is using, by the way, um, is prim. It is prim and it's really good length as well. You've got loads of different markings on there. Really clear markings for all of your... Even buttonholes on here, actually. Is there? Yeah, it's a really useful ruler. And you've got your curved lines as well. There you go. Sorry, just bringing the graphics in. Twenty nine ninety nine. By the way, the the one that I'm wearing in the larger pattern has now sold out. So well done if you did manage to get that. The ruler twenty nine ninety nine. Very handy. I think yes, I've seen yeah, uh, really handy. similar rulers to this actually. Um, another ruler that's also um, useful to have is um, this curve. so easy um, French curve because you've got some lines. Um, on the curve here, which are also useful if you're looking to reduce the length of the skirt. You can use it. Mm -mm. Sorry. I'm trying to squeeze <laughs> everything onto one desk. I'm trying to cover too much today. I haven't got enough room. Oh, we, know, we always take up the room that we've got, don't we? We're yes, expand to fill yeah. the space. So, for example, you might have, and I'm not sure, this one here, this has got five-eighths, half an inch and a quarter of an inch lines on here. So what you can do is, if you just want to take it up by something like the, um, the five-eighths of an inch, you can just mark, so I've put that five-eighths of an inch line on the cutting line for the size 14 I've cut out on here. And you can just use a pen or whatever it is to mark along... Oh, sorry. I've picked up a big fat marker pen. I wouldn't do it in a big fat marker pen, but I've just picked that up so you can see at home. So it's a bit clearer for us to see on air as yeah, well. Yeah, that's what I figured. You can see it because normally I would do it in pencil because I prefer to work in pencil because it's just easier. So the graphics I, for the French curve ruler, by the way, are coming in. There you go. So I'd do a series of marks at five eighths of an inch or however much it is that you need to reduce. And then you can go round and just join up and make that new curve. So you've just taken off an even amount at the bottom. Okay, does that make sense? So that gives you the two different places where you can reduce. You either reduce between the hip and the waistline or you take off the bottom of the yeah. skirt section. So that would be if you were doing this shorter version, which is view A on this one, I think or you've got the longer, longer versions, you'd do the same thing at the hem or wherever. Brilliant. Okay, so that's altering those um, because I think, yes, I mean, they'll, the nice thing is on this particular pattern is they've got different cup sizes. Oh, brilliant. So you've got oh, already, because quite often you'll need to do a full bust adjustment if you've got a larger bust or a small bust adjustment if your bust is smaller, just to make sure that you have the appropriate amount of fabric over the bust. So Whereas, which one is it that has so the bust adjustment? This one has got three different... This pattern. Yes, this pattern's got three different 
um, front bodice pieces to cut according to your chest size. Oh, brilliant. And you may want to go further. If you're particularly busty, you may want to add in even a little bit more. Yes. Um, but it's got those options, so it's already done for you. Fantastic. Which is brilliant. But quite often, maxi dresses, it's the length. It's that pattern with those options. Brilliant. Yes, which is super. Okay, so in terms of seaming, um, you've got different options, depending on whether you've got an overlocker or whether you've got a sewing machine. So I thought I would show you um, two, well, a couple of different options for seaming. We have a four-thread overlock, and I've done this on two different fabrics so that you can see what those look like and you'll be able to well I'm hoping you'll be able to see the the difference in the weight of those fabrics you see how yeah, I said how yeah. one will sit and fall slightly differently this one has got a lot more sort of life so to it so if somebody is you, like. you know feeling inspired after watching the, the so be would you st uh, but they're still sort of relatively new to dressmaking would you say to go to try I would say the heavier crepe yeah. is much better to work okay. with um, the, the lighter weight fabrics we'll are definitely much more challenging okay. um, in terms of cutting out and in terms of construction they are definitely definitely much okay. more challenging. I'll, I'll point out when we go across which ones think are Yeah heavier. but this crepe was absolutely, su sorry I keep, <laughs> no please don't, <laughs> but they're, they're absolutely super to work with so um, in terms of the sewing, uh, the overlocker that's a standard four thread overlock that will get you those and you can use that for construction, I use that for most of the construction for this. There's just a couple places where I use the sewing machine. Okay. And the amount of stretch in it meant that you didn't really need to use a special needle or anything. You could just carry on with your standard needle. Brilliant. No so special stitches or anything. It was, it was fine, just it, sewing as normal. If you don't have an overlocker, can you still do this? If you don't have an overlocker, I've done here on the 720 um, um, Pro machine, they have a foot on here which is um, the foot number M, and you might have something similar on your machine. Let's put that on something. Mm. Um, and you can see it's got some little, it's got a guide at the front, and it's got a couple of prongs. And those prongs will... Do you know what it's called? Um, it's called foot M, um, and <laughs> <laughs> it's foot M. Um, it's an I over, I would say before. an overcasting foot. Overcasting. Because with that, I've created two different, um, stitches this one here is stitch 15 and this is a double overcast oh stitch. so it looks like an overlock so it looks like an overlock and that's particularly good for fabrics that fray brilliant and then there's also um and so that that you would use as an edge finish and i didn't have any problem I, i'm afraid i can't find my sample but i didn't have any problem sewing on these lighter weight fabrics it just finishes the edge beautifully there's also another stitch which is stitch number 16 which is a very similar stitch a little bit wider but you can use it for construction as well so it's it a good idea to have a bit of a play on your machine isn't it and find out if it, what stitches it has which ones it has because you might find something similar at home different feet i, I, I know my machine's got so many different all feet, sorts of bits and pieces even and you look at, at it and you think what, what on earth is that but this is a fabric guide and then some little bars that just guide where the thread is going. okay so these are ones with the 720 pro that comes with the 720 pro so that's your overlocking and overcasting stitch um, but what I thought I'd do today is I'll show you a French seam um, because that gives it again a really beautiful finish for your Hannah's saying I love French seams oh I do they're really nice so what is what's the difference with a French seam um, a French seam and I'll show you on the reverse totally encloses your raw edges so it's really high end isn't it yeah it it's looks lovely. super smart yeah. it takes time and care and attention but it encloses all of your seams Oh, it's beautiful. So that's your... That does look very luxurious. So they're all enclosed. Okay, so I'll Amazing. show you how I, I make those. Um, if you take your fabric, normally you sew with right sides together. Yeah. With a French seam, you start off with wrong sides together. So we'll place wrong sides together. You need to know, well, you would need to know anyway, but you'll need to know what your seam allowance is when you're doing a French seam. This and is we'll such a transferable off. skill though, isn't it? Oh, it's Which super. You know I how use to it do on it. all sorts of things. So I will pin that. I bet you've started on your World Book Day costumes, haven't you? <laughs> no, I've got a stay of ex ex execution because it was supposed to be today. Oh. oh. And I, I wasn't prepared at all. And then school said, no, no, we've moved it. Oh. I can't believe that's been a year. Relief. 
Right, okay, so the seam allowance that we're doing on this is one and a half centimetre right. seam allowance. So what I will do is I will bring a smaller ruler on air. <laughs> <laughs> too big, for, too big for the job. Do we have something smaller? Something I don't smaller. think we do. Okay, I'll work it out. So, whoops, breaking the set. So what I want to do is um, within the one and a half centimetre seam allowance, I'm going to do a little snip at that one and a half centimetres. So I'm just doing a little snip at this end of the seam. And then I'm going to do another snip at the other end of the seam. And I will use this later. But it's good to do that before you start. So I've just got a little slip and it's going through both layers, the top layer and the underside layer. We're then going to sew, um, with the machine on, we're going to sew a seam we're going to turn the machine on. Helps if you have the machine on. Good we're going start, to sew it? a narrow seam. So your wrong sides together. Yeah. And we're going to sew an, a narrow seam anywhere between quarter and an eighth of an inch or just five or six millimetres. Okay. Just a really little seam. And oh, I was ch oh, the words are coming out of my mouth as I'm saying it. With this machine, um, a great thing that you have is the straight stitch foot. A straight stitch plate ah. which actually means if you look at that one that's your standard plate on your machine. Now in this machine you get three different plates and I wasn't sure what a straight stitch plate is but even with a quilting actually this helps it's really to not useful. chew up your end. Because you can see the difference here and I can't get my hand out of the way is that this is your standard stitch plate and you can see the gap here is nice and wide and that's good for doing decorative stitches and zigzag and yeah. whatnot. Whereas here, the hole is very small. So it's just to make sure that it's always Yes, and it means that there's less room for the fabric to get sucked into the machine. It's not essential, but it's really useful actually. It is it? really, really useful. Okay, so we'll That's really that quick, again. easy change it actually. It is really it? quick, there's no <laughs> screws or anything. It's really simple. One of the nice features of that machine. Ooh. On the, um, there's, there's a book, by the way, which we absolutely love. This is by Alison Smith, who is, has been given an MBE for her dedication to sewing. I mean, it's amazing. In the book, I'm just checking, but I'm sure there is a section on rent seams. Uh, yeah, I, it's where I've put the piece of paper for you. Oh, there you go. Thanks, babe. Right. So there you go on page 60. Um, my method, just to let you know, my method is different. Sli okay. Slightly different to that. No, it's good to do different, different, um, different techniques. Different techniques. So um, what I've done there is I've sewn a narrow seam. If you find that your seam isn't quite narrow enough, what you can do is you can just trim off your excess here. So it's because it's going to be enclosed, you don't want bulk in there? No, you don't want bulk in there, and you don't want what I accidentally did on this one, is the where I didn't trim properly and I've got a few hairy bits. Ah. Now, what's also a really great tool... There you tool go, let's look in on the mistake close up. No, I'm only joking. What is it, more haste, less speed? Oh, look at all that hair, it's just terrible. But it's not, it's, you know, for me, that's a bit sloppy. <laughs> You're going to so do it hard properly. on yourself. You're such a perfectionist. Well, if you're going to do a job properly, and if you're going to a wedding, the last thing you want to do is turn up with a hairy dress. <laughs> um, so, but that. Can you um, in the centre of the desk? I can, of course, I can. Thank you. So she can. says, with no room. Sorry, we're Ooh. breaking the rules today. We're going all punk, aren't we? Why not? <laughs> <laughs> that was my. Um, I don't know what it's called. What's it called? Pogo. Pogo. Yeah, it was good. So how do we press So this? I've pressed flat, then I'm going to press open as best you can. And this crepe is a little bit more bouncy than the other fabrics. So if you've got a clapper or something, that comes in handy. Just the clapper's sold out, hasn't it? It's sold out in minutes. I'm not surprised. It. I was driving down the road thinking, you know what, I'd really like it. A good one. I use all sorts of bits and pieces. I use quilting rulers and I've got some pattern weights that I use. <laughs> We're going to get more, don't worry. And then from here, you then take the, pat the, the two pattern pieces and you bring them together. 
and those two little snips that I did earlier, you can then match those up. So you can almost see where I've done those two little snips. That just gives you a little bit of an extra guide to make sure that you're stitching in the right place. And I'll do the other one at the other end. So again, you've got those two little snips. Oh, my fingers on there. You can see the little snips. So make sure those sit up. I just find by putting those in, it makes it that touch easier to make sure everything's lined up. Give that a press. Just make sure that you've rolled that seam onto the very edge. Cool a bit. Stick a couple of pins. And then when you go over to your machine, you are starting with your needle down and then you can slide those two slits up to the position where the needle is. Yeah. And then you've worked out, watch the iron. Thank you. So if I go needle down position, I'm then gonna slide that in to where the slit is and put the presser foot down. So I can needle then is see right in there. It's right in there. And then you can see this edge that I've pressed where that is on the presser foot that I'm using. And then I can use that as a guide. Okay. So it just takes out, by doing those snips, it takes out some of the measuring and how big was that first seam that I did? And because if you've trimmed off this a little bit of excess, you can't go back and measure it and you can lose track. Okay. And if you've got something with lots of seams, what you don't want is to suddenly make something that's smaller than it's intended to be. Okay. So when you come to the other end, that should just sit. I'm making sure that those two slits are still in the same place as each other. And then you would give that a press and then that's your French scene done. Amazing. So it is double the amount of work, we but do the actually well. it's sort of not double the amount of work because you don't have any seams to finish. Yeah, yeah. There you go. And I mean, yeah, if a lot of fabrics that fray, this is going to yeah. really hide that as well, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, absolutely, because some of the fabrics tend to sort of feel like they're coming to pieces in front yeah, of your eyes. Yeah, yeah. So that's really useful. Well, and did I mention, I meant to mention, serrated scissors. Ah, uh, OK. So when you're cutting out, I would cut out either with a rotary blade, because I find it easier and you're moving the fabric less, or you're using serrated scissors that will help. With grip. Yeah, they'll Make grip and they'll more. stop the fabric fraying quite so much. Oh. Brilliant. Uh, we'll go and have a quick recap. Yep, and I'll then. get ready for the next instalment. Brilliant. Thank you, Victoria. Uh, just so you know, as I say, the pattern, the dress that I'm wearing, the larger size, the size is 18 to 24, has now sold out. We have it available in size 8 to 16. So I'm wearing option C, which I love. I just love a maxi dress. I think they're so flattering and do hide a multiple of sins, don't they? They're brilliant. So easy to wear, especially if you've got, um, if we've got a summer like we did last year, then we need to definitely stock up on all the maxis. Really clear pattern as well. All your size guide, once again, is on the back of the packet or on a second image on the web. Two other patterns that we have. Um, well, it's the same pattern, just different sizes. You may recognize it. Same skills, same skills that we're talking about here with Victoria. Different style, but as we were explaining, it's got a similar sort of bodice, just different style sleeves and bottoms. I love that this one's got that lovely sweep across. This is size 6 to 14. All of your size measurements will be on the second image on the web, as always. If you want to have a closer look at all of those sizes and your, your finished garment size, how much fabric you're going to need, etc., so it's 6 to 14, and then the other one um, is the same pattern again, but in a different sizing range. So this one's size 14 to 22. We're all completely different body shapes, and like they were saying um, on the sewing bee, it's changed a lot as well since the 70s. Our body shapes have changed. A size 12 as it is today is different to a size 12 then. So it is always important to measure yourself. We all have completely different shapes, don't we? So it is so handy. 
It's not a generic size 12 of what you think it is in a shop when you're dressmaking. It's always important to have your measurements. So, the fabric that I'm wearing, thank you all so much for the lovely emails. Um, it is gorgeous. I've really enjoyed wearing this. So, this is your jungle cherry. Half a meter for five ninety nine. <laughs> I love the name of it as well, Cherry Jungle Leaf. Great one to work with. So because of the weight of this one, it's a really great one to work with. And compared, as Victoria was explaining, see how this sort of sits away from my arm. I think it's lovely for hot weather, isn't it? I do love this sort of kimono style sleeve, but they also have this lovely gathery sleeve. This fabric though, it does sit slightly away. So if you're looking at one of the lighter fabrics, it will sit closer. Or if you're a more of a beginner, uh, or more at the beginning of your dressmaking journey, uh, then this is gonna be a lot easier to work with. The other fabrics could be a bit more challenging, but we love a challenge, so a slightly heavier weight with this one. Now, these are also brand new today. The navy is now sold out. Amazing. Well done if you got that. The grey and pink is available. So if you loved that navy one, this is, again, beautiful. I think this one would look nice on my holiday in Thailand. Have I got it upside down? Thank you. Three pounds and 19 and a half metre. What's the, um, the width of this one? 145. Does say 148, but um, yeah, I think it's 145. Yeah. 399 and a half meter. And then, should we have a look at that other coral one? The aqua and coral. If there's any others that you want me to, to show, then let me know. We want to try and do as many sort of techniques with Victoria as we can. But these are beautiful dressmaking fabrics. They're all underneath us on the web, so have a good old look. Also, the linings here that we've got. Um, what Hannah's going to do, just to save time again, is play them all through after the show so they're easy to access on our website. So the one that I'm wearing right now isn't actually lined, but some of these are slightly more sheer that you would probably want to line, even just line the bodice. Depends where you're going to wear it. Maybe this is something that you're going to wear around the pool. You might not need to have a fully lined dress. Six pounds, 99 and a half metre for the coral carnation, Georgette. And it's all digital, 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 digital printed. 145 wide, 100% polyester. Okay. So obviously in the how-to series, we're on part three now. Watch every Friday um, after watching the sewing bee. Oh, did you see what we what's on next week? I kind of, I'm so, yeah, I'm so gutted. So I'm not here, but over the road from where I live, they've got the most amazing little dashend that's like an Instagram star. So I said, oh, I'm so annoyed that I'm not here because otherwise I would have brought the dog in as well because it's doggy week, isn't it? They've got all lovely doggy outfits. So I'm hoping that we're going to be doing that next week. I'll be watching from Thailand. Jill messaged in to say, thank you for your clear explanation for a French scene, Victoria. We've also put into this hour this book by Alison Smith. It does really break down lots of different skills that we're talking throughout the How To series. It's a really, really great book. In fact, um, I was talking to Wendy about this one. This is a brilliant one for absolute beginners as well because it talks you right through from the basics what you're going to need for dressmaking. So your measuring tools, your marking tools, the thread, useful extras. It also talks through, obviously, haberdashery items, threads, sewing machines, needles, breaking down the sewing machine. So great for beginners, but also taking each technique back to basics. So there's a great section on sleeves, um, pleats on curtains. There's also um, home interiors in there as well, the pleats on curtains, buttonholes, button loops, pockets, waistbands. 
I heard them mentioning about fell sleeves. Uh, it was the Spanish the guy, wasn't it, on the trousers? Yeah. So, I mean, that's in here, isn't it? There's all, all sorts in here, finishing touches. But if you hear things and you're like, oh, I need to know what that is. It's not something that you hear every day. So that's a really great book. Should we go across to Victoria and do some rolled hems? I'm going to take the patterns with me. Come on with us, come on with us. Just £12.99 for that book and it really does take you right back to basics. Brilliant. Rolled hems. Rolled hems. I'm sorry, I'm only going to show you one style of rolled hem. Have I got any rolled hems um, on here? Not on this one, no. Okay. Um, I'd intended to do them on, well, I would have done them on this version. So where would they um, live? I would do rolled hems. You could do, well, you could do those on your sleeve hems, on the hem of the actual skirt portion. You can do it on the ruffles um, that come across um, on the front of this one and on the decorative parts. Because it's the got front. that ruffle, I suppose, at the front. Yeah. Really pretty. You don't want to really, do a normal hem. No, you don't want a big, that. fat, thick hem. At okay. All. <laughs> No, not at all. Um, so on this one, um, the way I've done the hemming on this one, and I'll just show people, okay. this I did for um, speed's sake, is that I overlocked the edges and then I just turned that to the wrong side. And then from the right side, I've top stitched those in place. So I've just done that to pull that together quite quickly. Um, if you're doing a rolled hem, you can do that on the overlocker. And I'm really sorry, I was going to do a demonstration on that, but I've struggled taking the needle. Oh, okay. <laughs> it's a bit stock in place I haven't got my muscles on today um, so uh, but you can do a rolled hem on your overlocker which is right. super sweet uh, uh, super fast what you need to bear in mind is that the pattern has allowed a one and a half centimeter seam allowance so it's allowed one and a half centimeters so you'll need to cut off you'll need to line up your fabric in the right place so that it cuts the appropriate amount okay off. Um, but if you don't have an overlocker, another option is to use um, something like See, that's this. that's another foot I don't think I've noticed before. What's this one called? That will be a, um, a not piping, what are we doing? A rolled hem foot. Rolled hem that's foot. That's a rolled hem foot. And on this machine, I think it's a foot D. Does that say D on there? Yeah, it does. Yeah, so that's a foot D. And if you can see on the end, if you turn it up so that people can see at home, it's got like a spiral kind of effect going on you can see there mm -hmm. so do you need to have so one what of these, that will do these types of feet to be able to do a roll um, hem? in order well it just makes it it sort of does it for you okay. it removes a lot of pressing because otherwise what you're doing is you're pressing a tiny hem you're folding that over and pressing another tiny hem and then you're top stitching whereas this will do all of that for you okay but I'm not gonna lie to start it is really tricky okay it takes a bit of getting used to and this fabric was different to this fabric, right. which will be different to this fabric. Yeah. So you just need to test it. But what you've got to think, don't panic, because this very edge piece will be caught in another seam likely anyway. Right. So don't panic. Uh, so the foot goes onto your machine as, as normal. It's worth having a look at your machine and seeing what feet you've got included. Oh, that's a much longer piece <laughs> than I thought. <laughs> OK, so to do this, um, I'll just do it on this side. I like to start off with my presser foot a little distance in from the edge where you're going to start. And I'll lay the fabric to the right-hand side to sit evenly on that right-hand side of the fabric. And I'll just run a couple of stitches, four or five stitches. Um, don't cut. Bring your needle up and take the fabric out from underneath the foot. Don't cut your fabric, keep your fabric here. I'm going to need your help in a minute. Yeah. Ordinarily, knee I would lift. use my knee lifter. So I would have my knee lifter in and I would yeah. do the press of foot with the knee lifter. A bit difficult you're standing, isn't it? You start to look like Not you're... Not possible. Um... Not possible when you're standing. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't quite work, can't get quite high enough. So I've got these, these threads underneath here. And look, I'm going with my knee already. <laughs> it's crazy. So I've just looped those underneath and I'm going to... Try and slide, and sorry, I'm putting a pin in my mouth, which I know you shouldn't do. I haven't got enough hands. And you use those threads to encourage Pump the fabric right. into and under the foot. And I'm just going to encourage it in with a pin just to get in. And then I'm going to put the knee needle down. And if you wouldn't mind just lowering that presser foot. And what you're doing is you've got your, this is um, wrong side up. 
and you've got the your main body of your fabric here and the edge the raw edge you're folding over and the raw edge is sitting just on the edge of the the little opening of the foot is where you feed it in so you just fold the fabric over ah and like you said it, the machine does the rest for and you and the machine do, does the rest the for you so it folds it under and under and is that coming out all right yeah so what you don't want to do is you don't want to fold over too far because otherwise what it does is that it comes out of the machine and it, you'll have a little raw edge sticking out. So make sure it doesn't go out too far. So you'll either have something slightly longer than you anticipated or you'd want to cut off a little strip of fabric if the, the length was super, super important. We've got about three minutes. I don't know where this out's gone. <laughs> no. I, <laughs> So you can see there, that's creating a really nice and, and shall I stop there? <laughs> yeah, this is a very long, long, very strip, long isn't it? piece of fabric. So I'll just um, I'll stop there for you. Do you do a back stitch at the end? Um, you can do a little back stitch, I think. So that there, you'll see. <laughs> nice. Again, it does give you a lovely professional finish, but that's if you don't have an overlocker, if you've got an overlocker. Yes, if you've got an overlocker, you can choose a, um, a coordinating colour or a contrasting colour to finish off those edges. Or you can do as I've done here, where you overlock, turn under and top stitch. Or you can just press, take your time and press a little seam and a little seam. Yeah. And the way that I would do that is, is if you, you didn't want to overlock and turn under, you wanted to create that seam, I would actually sew a line of stitches at the five eighths of an inch or one and a half centimeters, I would sew a long line of basting stitches to give me a line to press against. And then I would press up onto that line so that you've got your hem. And then I would go back, turn that under and press. Right, okay. I find that easier than pressing a little a hem piece. Yeah. and then a bigger one because I think you lose track because you're never, you're never going to be able to do a quarter of an inch seam. That's no, really, really no. tricky to do. So if you deal with a bigger seam first, and then you can go back and you can either then, then do your quarter of an inch, or I'm normally quite lazy and I just halve it. Yeah. And then I find that easier and more accurate way to do things. But if you start with that line of basting stitches at the point at which you want your hem to sit, that gives you a visual guide and it gives you something to press against. Or you could use something like the seam pressing yeah, um, yeah, cards that we yeah. have, the prim ones. They're oh, also really yeah, super yeah. for pressing up hems. They're also Brilliant. really good. Thank you very, very much. Yeah, no Just problem. so you know, um, our, our Dukey overlocker. With the air threading. Air threading. It's got the function of doing rolled hem on there. And the air threading is fabulous. My overlocker's got air threading and it's just revolutionary. There <laughs> the is first time so you much about it, this machine. It's just amazing. You just think, oh my word, I've just saved so much heartache. And, and I mean, you know, once you get the hang of them, they're absolutely fine. Yeah. But the first time you use one, you think, oh, this is brilliant. Ah, oh, amazing. So that was, that's the latest overlocker that we launched, wasn't it? Oh, it was brilliant. It was brilliant. Um, the Juki machines are incredible. I know that um, our producer, Hannah, she's saying, I desperately want one of these. Mm. And like I say, I made most of that dress with the overlocker. Oh. And it's so, it just comes together so quickly. For me, the longest part is actually cutting out the pattern and cutting out the fabric mm. and then whew, just yeah. whizzes together. Brilliant. Thank you very, very much. No problem. We'll see you in an hour. See you in an hour. We're going to be um, bag punky. making. Yeah, brilliant. Thank you very, very much. No so okay, let me take the patterns with me. So let's have a quick recap on all of the different patterns and the fabric. So the dress that I'm wearing is now only available in one size variation, which is 8 to 16. I'm wearing the 12. It is gorgeous. It is absolutely gorgeous. I love the kimono style sleeves, but on the back of the packet, you can see all of the different variations, how you've got this sleeve that I'm wearing, which is this kimono type. You've also got this lovely floaty sleeve. Lots of different variations. Your sizes are all on the uh, second image on the web. If you want to have a bit of a closer look, it is in a variance of languages, isn't it, as well? But um, if you go onto the website, then you'll be able to just have a bit of a look on the second image of how much fabric you're going to need. The other option that we have is this style. Similar skills to what we've been looking at with um, Victoria. Just a little bit of um, a different style of maxi that crossover look with a v-neck 
14 um, to 22 is your main graphic. It's exactly the same, just different size variations. The 6 to 14, the code is going along the bottom, £9.99 for all of the different variations as well. Right, so all of the fabrics that we've been showcasing are available underneath us on the website. If you're watching Watch Live, underneath us, products from today's show. But what Hannah is going to do is play through all of the lining, so therefore that will be added to that section as well. Dress, this dress isn't lined, it doesn't have to be lined. Personal choice, if you are having a, a look at maybe one of the more sheer fabrics, where you're going to wear it and what's appropriate, then you do have the option for lining as well. The fabric that I'm wearing with this that is not lined is brand new today. It's absolutely gorgeous. As I said, all of the fabrics are available underneath us on the website. So have a good old look. And get dressmaking. Enjoy, enjoy, enjoy. This one is probably going to be the, the easiest to work with out of the selection we're looking at. This is a really lovely, lovely fabric. I don't want you to get stuck or put off the first time that you work um, with one of these fabrics. If you're new to dressmaking, I don't want you to get, um, you know, put off by, by a particular fabric that is more difficult to work with. So I want to be honest with you about that one. Also, the book is available underneath us on the web. Now, coming up, we loved Sue's first hour. We've got more heirloom bears, brand new heirloom bears. They're absolutely gorgeous. And don't forget, at 12, K&L, K&L is back. So stay tuned, coming up after this. If you've never purchased with Sewing Quarter before, then today is the day to do so, as we've got a fantastic new offer for every new customer. To get you started, we are now offering new customers two metres of fabulous pre-cut fabric for free with your first purchase. Whether it's quilting that takes your fancy, English paper piecing, embroidery, dressmaking, or bag making. Sewing Quarter explores every aspect of sewing and quilting with amazing demonstrations from special guest designers from all over the world. There is no minimum spend required and no code needed. Your free gift worth £14.99 will automatically be added to your order. So why not see what all the buzz is about and get sewing with Sewing Quarter? Shop online at www.sewingquarter.com, call our UK friendly call centre on 0800 112 4433 or download our brand new app. I should have really ha thought this through and had um, a bit of a quick change with a mohawk and all sorts. I was meant to, I know, my, I wonder if my mum is watching, but sh we were flicking through some old photographs and my mum went to um, like a, a dinner dance and there's somebody who's in a lovely, a lovely um, tuxedo and there's my mum dressed in full punk gear. So I know that my mum used to, um, uh, and then my dad took me to see Susie and the Banshees. I know they mentioned her, didn't they? And Joe Lice, it was like, no, more S Club 7, I don't know who they are. But anyway, whether you sort of remember those punk days in the 70s or love that sort of music or even just love this tartan bag, this is going to be another great how-to, more bag-making skills and techniques of how to create this bag, which is from one of the most popular books that we've stocked, actually, with other. Can I just say, I've got a handbag, which I had for my a very, very special birthday from my grandparents, which is a really gorgeous designer. I'm just gonna say it, it's Vivian Westwood, and it looks so much like it. It looks so much like it. That shape and the tartan is, is very sort of Vivian Westwood-esque, isn't it? I love it. Very designer-esque. But whether you want to put a long strap, it's got a swivel clip on it, so you can have it that it sort of is a large, it's a quite a big bag still. And you could also, with these D-rings, put um, a longer strap on and have it as um, a shoulder bag. Okay, so it comes from a book which, as I said, oh my word, every time we get this book in, it sells out. So we're really lucky to be seeing this. It's, um, it's got some really lovely Japanese style techniques, actually. So we've done a lot of book, uh, bags and gifts from this book before. We've got 36 great value for money because you've got 36 projects in here with really really lovely um, instructions as well there you go so we've taken aspects of this bag here to 
construct our wand today. It depends what sort of level of bag maker you are, whether you want um, precise instructions or whether um, you've got a bag already that you want to take inspiration from. If you watched the Great British Sewing Bee on Tuesday, the whole punk thing was about, you know, taking those, well, not in this case, taking your instructions and then just going with it, be a big punk. Floral coasters, they're cute, aren't they? So there's not just bags in here. <laughs> See, hang on, how have I gone? I'm true punk there at heart, wasn't I? From, from punk to, oh my word, look at the little cute coasters. They're so pretty. I'm not very punk, am I? This is why I should have put my leather jacket on and my mohawk <laughs> to get into character. But you have all of your templates as well, full size templates in there. Some lovely applique designs. Should we start with the blue bundle? This is very similar to my Gordon tartan. My, um, my Gordon tartan is blue and green, check like this. This would be a lovely special birthday bag for me. If I say birthday bag, it's my name, Hannah. Not a birthday bag. <laughs> Why are you confused? <laughs> it's my name, Gordon the Tartan is a Scottish name and the Gordon Tartan looks like this. Okay, I, I understand where you're going from. Anyway, sorry, Hannah and I are just having a conversation in, and I, I realise you're only hearing my side of it. Right, a metre and a half of, fab, of fabric in PU. So you get a metre of your tartan. This is your black watch tartan. And then you also get half a metre of PU in navy blue. It's 50% viscose, 50% PU. You also get your thread. In the kit, you get your snap hook. You get one of those, and you get your D rings. Oh, you get um, poly wadding as well. It's a quilted bag, so you get poly wadding as well. Okay, handles are separate and studs are separate. Um, we'll talk to you about the different accessories in a second, but I do love that extra detail with the studs as well. Should we do the red? The red with the red PU. So you have, again, a metre of your tartan. Oh, this is making me want to go and eat the shortbread that's in the kitchen. Yeah, a lovely Sue bought us in some shortbread from Scotland. Actual Scottish shortbread. So you have one metre, you also have half a metre of your PU, 50% viscose, 50% PU, D-rings, snap hook and thread. The $27.99. We didn't add the book into the bundle because I know so many of you already have the book. It's your choice if you want to add the book. Um, and, or if you want to just be, you know, inspired by these colours and go for it. Make a bag of your own choice. I know we've got a lot of adventurous bag makers that are watching. So you also get your craft wadding included. Now, the final colourway is the one that Victoria is going to be working with. This one. Argyle with your black. So you get a metre of your tartan or your check. You get a half a metre of your PU. Your snap hook, pack of D-rings, thread and your poly wadding. Do you know what? I feel so lucky today. I don't know what I've done to be so... Honestly, I've been spoiled. So the last few days, I've been absolutely spoiled. We've had the most amazing shows. I've then been given the travel teddy. Look what Victoria came in and made me. Hannah, you're going to be... She said, I saw, I saw that Becky Alexander Frost made one. So Victoria's made one for me. Hannah's been swinging hers around like this with her keys the last couple of days. I know, what have I done to get so many lovely presents? She felt sorry for you. She said she felt sorry for me. <laughs> It's not because she loves me, she just felt sorry for me. <laughs> Had a, yeah, pity, a pity present. <laughs> I've got my pity pom pom. <laughs> my pity pom pom. Anyway, we've got an embellishment bundle. So if you love these studs, I really like these stars as well. Okay, so you've got the stars and you've got the pyramids. We'll talk to Victoria about how you attach them as well. Are you warm in here? It it's warm. very warm in here, isn't it? Well, just could you turn the heater off, please? Um, so you've got the pyramid and you've got the star. You've also got your chain. 
which actually isn't a chain uh, that you put on your bag. It's more for like accessorizing. You could even stitch it on, you know, that kind of designer look. Quite Stella McCartney actually, isn't it? Very punk, very punk. And then also, of course, safety pins. This morning I spent so long looking for safety pins, didn't we? We've got packs and packs and packs of safety pins. There you go, so you also get a big pack of safety pins to embellish away. £16.99 for your punk bundle. Um, here's something Hannah definitely doesn't say very often. Here's a packet of studs. We can offer you two packs of studs today. Let's go for the pyramids first, so your squares, which is the ones that Victoria have used on the bag, these ones. I could imagine these on denim jackets or on jeans or on a purse. Denim jacket. Oh, brilliant. Or, oh, you know, the Emmeline purse. Be nice on a purse, wouldn't it? £2.99 for your pack of 30. Gosh, they're getting very into all this accessorising in the gallery. Jesse, what was your in point? <laughs> and then the stars. Sorry, we're still on the stud claws. Right, stars. These are lovely, aren't they? They'll be great for denim jackets. Pack of... 20, 12, 12, 12. Pack of 12. For just £2.99, embellish away. Go crazy. They'll be lovely on all lots of bags. Obviously, just silver coloured. They are just silver coloured. Just to reiterate, obviously, I think you obviously knew that £2.99, but just to reiterate, they are silver colours, I just have to say. Um, anyway, let's go across. Let's go across. Shall I take the book as well with me? You've got the book? Brilliant. Thank you very much. How are you? Not bad. Not bad. Thank you for my tassel. Right. My pity pom pom. I was making one and you were like, oh, I'd really like one of those. <laughs> my subtle hints weren't. Um, she didn't pick up on the No. Screen. Oh, I think, sorry, I think something's happening to my microphone. Um, oh, it's my oh. microphone that's, you need to talk into my mic. I need to talk into your microphone. Sorry, we're going to my sort your microphone. Okay, mine, mine's not great. <laughs> Just lean in. Okay, so <laughs> this bag. Um, so this is, this is a bit of a nod to being punk. We've not gone completely overboard. We've not gone completely crazy. Just a bit of a nod towards it. So we've got the tartan and we've got the studs. So I'll show you how I've sort of referenced the pattern in the book and how I've done that and then how I've put the studs on um, and where you would take it from there and other options that you've got. And it's a quilted bag as well, isn't it? Yeah, I've gone sort of... Uh, the, the tartan sort of felt like it lended itself to a bit of quilting, so we've put a bit of quilting on there um, just to give it a bit more interest. So we'll talk a, bit, a little bit about how we cut out the fabric as well because you want to make sure that the tartan, because it's a bold print, that it's actually placed the, in the right way on the bag, if that makes sense. You don't want it to skew if. Brilliant. So the bag itself is such a beautiful sh shape as well, isn't it? Yeah, it's a really handy shape. And I've put on, the, you've got the, d the sort of the D-ring and the swivel clip so that you can sort of, as I've got it here, sort of hooked in in the middle, but you can hook it. It's on the front cover of the book where it's actually hooked on the outside. So you've got options. Or you can just leave it open and, um, and just have it as a standard tote. So it's up to you. You've got options. Sorry, I did want you to see us then. I was like, we were both trying to talk into the one microphone. But I think, <laughs> can you hear? I hope so. I think you can hear. Yeah, we're fine. We don't fine. need to talk into your chest no, anymore. No, don't need to. <laughs> as much as that was lovely, lovely, lovely. Right, so have you worked much with the studs? Um, well, I had the denim jacket when I was younger with right. studs on it. Yeah. I think my mum helped with that, though, and I love them. It was, oh, it was my favourite denim jacket. Oh, are they Absolutely are. Loved it. Really and they're beautiful. really, really simple to use. OK. But just on something like this, on a denim jacket and clothing, you don't need to be so exact, but on a bag, you kind of want to make sure that they're spaced in the right way. So the instructions are in the back, uh, in the book, but yeah, you went all punk on it and just... Yeah, sort of I've kind of taken the dimensions of the bag yeah. because the bag itself is um, a standard 
piece for one side of the bag and then it's quilted on the other, pieced and quilted on the other side. So I've sort of gone, okay, well, those are the dimensions. This is how she's constructed it. This is the size of the base and yep. whatever, but taken those and gone from there. Brilliant. I mean, there's a lot of bag makers out there. So um, if you already have something in mind for this bundle, we just love all of the different um, tartan prints. So just thought we'd give you the option. So what I've done is I've taken um, the dimensions of the bag okay. and I've, I've split it into a third and two thirds. So I've got the bottom section as four inches and the top, in, top section as eight inches to give it a bit of a balance. But it's up to you. You could have half and half or you could have the small, smaller bit at the bottom or you could just do, do it all out of the PU mm -hmm. or you could do um, a tartan bit in the middle. You could put the tartan on the side and have you know, the side bits in the PU. So just have a play with it and have a think about how you might like to use the print because they're such brilliant, oh, bold Oh, well, there's so prints. much in there, isn't there? There's yes. so much in there, so you can actually have a bit of, of play around. Yes, yeah, you've got absolutely plenty. Um, I managed to have a fair amount left over and I made the body of the bag and the lining. Amazing. So you've got enough there. Yeah, the lining of it as well is in that lovely check print again. It's really beautiful. So all I did is I made sure that this, uh, that I had one of these main stripes in the very center of my, I think it's 18 inches, 19 inches across. So I made sure that at nine and a half from the edge was the center of one of these stripes, just to make sure that it sort of visually sits nicely mm -hmm. in the middle of the bag. Because otherwise, well, I think as long as you get either this middle stripe or the middle of this stripe in the middle of the bag, that's okay. But yeah. for me, visually, this is wider and more impactful and have that that portion in the middle. Okay. Uh, so then we're just going to sew these right sides together. Do we need to change our needle or anything for um, the PU? No, the PU is really simple and easy to, to sew through. Brilliant. So you might want um, some sewing clips, which I didn't bring with me. Oh, um, yeah, but you don't want to pin it, do you? Well, you can pin, but if you pin, because it's really simple, you know, it's really easy and simple to, to pin through. It's not tough, not as hard to get through like the leather that you were featuring. Was it, mm -hmm. was it yesterday? Was it the day before? The day before yesterday. The day before um, yesterday. <laughs> It was day before yesterday. Yeah, I think it was day before yesterday. Uh, much more difficult to pin right. through. Um, but this, if you're pinning, just pin within the seam allowance. Yeah. So if you don't have sewing clips, then you're absolutely fine. And did you put your walking foot on as well? Yeah, I find the walking foot um, just invaluable when I'm doing bag making. So we're going to sew this together. Just along the length. Oh, one thing I didn't ask for is a pressing cloth. I'm really sorry. That's absolutely fine. We can bring you a pressing cloth. Or oh, I can just you? use a piece of fabric from down here, actually. Okay. That should be fine. Save some running. I did enjoy the um, punk section, actually, on there. Oh, the it's a bit thing. of fun, isn't it? It is. Really yeah. good. It was funny. As I say, I, I think my um, my mum claims that she was a bit punk. I, want, I wanted her to send in the pictures of her. She's no, funny. my parents never were. No. No. Well, right. Mum thinks that she was, but she probably wasn't. Oh, your poor Mum. <laughs> right, I'll just use some of that fabric. Oh, look. Look at that sewing clips oh. appear. There you go. Magic. You've got the ball to take, aren't it you? Is. Mm. I'll just give that a bit of a press. And then I'm just going to press that so that the PU is going upwards away from the seam because it will sit nicer or more nicely. Can you put your iron, so you don't want to put I, your iron on I it? I probably no. wouldn't put the iron on the PU. I'm just going to press that away. I do love these pressing boards. Oh, oh yeah, these are great. Aren't I was they? looking at them online last night, thinking, oh, I might just treat myself to one of those. It is handy instead of having to put an well, ironing board. I've up, got isn't a it? tabletop got... ironing board, right. one of those little ones yeah. with the little legs. Quite a decent size, but my, I obviously didn't buy a very good quality one, and mine dips in the middle. Okay, and it's really annoying. Oh, actually, I'm going to stay there because now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to attach. I lie. I'm going to come over this way because I'm going to put some interfacing on on the reverse. What sort of interfacing are you I've using? Just used a a, I've just used a medium weight interfacing because I wanted to use this just to reinforce a little bit because the next stage after this, we're attaching the, um, the, press, the studs. Okay. So I'll just roughly This is the hemline. Them. It's on our website. 
Lots of you have probably already got it in your stash. Now, in terms of the actual interfacing for the bag, you might want to make a firmer bag. So you might want to use something like the Styleville or you know, something else. OK. Could you pass the rotary cutter? Oh, sorry. Oh, you put it over there. Side. Thank you. Yes, you might want a firmer bag, so it's completely up to you how you interface. But for this, we'll do the interfacing on the back to reinforce before we put the studs in. And then we're going to quilt it with some of the um, lightweight wadding. Could you use any chick sporty? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, why not? I'm just going to trim this down so we don't get it all over the nice pressing board. Get myself into trouble oh. otherwise. I got all um, bombed web all over my iron. <gasps> I, I ironed the wrong side of the interfacing the other day. Oh, I just no. went, oh, you are kidding. I, I was rushing and um, it was a bit dark in the kitchen where I was sewing. And I just, you just, all I did is I touched the iron on it and went, <gasps> oh, I knew exactly no. what I'd done. Yeah. So I had to go and quickly find my iron cleaner. And it's, so, it's such good stuff. It's really good. It came off. I would say that was probably. I'll stick that on. So this, in terms of the studs, it's, it's up to you how far you want to go and how many studs you want to put on and how regular you want to be. I'll show you how I was quite regimented with, yeah, absolutely. with how do I you, placed them. Would you them. find that challenge of going all punk quite difficult? Yes. <laughs> oh, man, I couldn't. Uh, yeah. You're oh. very much quilter, symmetry. Yes, uh, it's OCD, symmetry. Yes, yeah. I like things to be <laughs> right and proper and, yeah. Ooh. <laughs> can't cope, can't cope. <laughs> Although, if you saw where I keep all my sewing stuff in my sewing room, you wouldn't think so. Oh, no. <laughs> it's a state. Is it all shut away, though, that you can yeah, shut Yeah, I've got a door. a door, shut the door. <laughs> but at the moment, I can't even get in because there's a massive box in the doorway. Oh, well, I've that's got to climb over it. Sewing call to headquarters at the mm. moment here. We're all having a bit of a sort out. State of it, flux. It, mm -hmm. It's it always gets... When you start organising things, it gets worse, doesn't it, before you can start to <laughs> Well, you've got to tell yourself, it gets worse before it gets better. You're not using any steam to adhere? No, I'm not applying any steam. And you know what, I probably needs longer to attach and to do a proper job of that, but for the sake of quickness. Right, so I've done these stars. I've just done one row of stars because you get less stars in a container. I think there were 12, 12 of those. and 30 in the other. But there were 30 in the other. So on this one... I've done a row of studs along the bottom and then I've just done three in the middle just to try and mirror the shape of when you pull the sides in on the back. Lovely. But you've got enough if you wanted to do another row of studs because I think I did one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. The embellishment nine. bundles in the main graphics, by the nine, way. 10, 11, 12, 13. So I've used 13 so you could get two more studs on if you wanted to do the same as the front and the back. But what I decided to do is to do a few less, but to also put them on the handles, because I thought that was yeah. just quite a nice echo. In the uh, pyramid pack, you get 30 in the stars in the 12. S sorry, 12 in the stars. Um, the stars are going to go across the bottom on their own. You do get them in the bottom, though, but if you want some more, because there's 12 in that pack, they're going along the bottom. So what I've done here is I've placed each of the stars in line with the white line, the middle of these white lines. So I've put them underneath to space them out evenly. And I've done a similar kind of thing with the little pyramids as I've, I've positioned those equally underneath each of the stripes. So these ones, I've placed the top of the star. I think I did two inches, two inches from that seam. So I'll take my quilting ruler and I'm placing that with two inch line along the seam that we've just done. And I'll take one of my stars. I'm just taking it. And then I will take one of the lines going vertically. So I've got horizontally, I've got the two inch line. And I'll take one of the lines going vertically just to make sure as a sense check that I'm definitely going straight. And then I'll take one of the stars and you just need to decide. Well, it, it kind of makes more sense to me to have the, the a top point rather than that way because that kind of looks like the stars are going downwards. So kind of push that where you want it to be, which is not there. It's there. Oh Vic, come on, we're doing punk week. <laughs> 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 but 
but I, you are the least fun person, aren't you, in the world? Oh no, that's not quite right. It's just right. not quite in the right place. <laughs> I'm really sorry, it's just not in me. I can't do I'm it. Come out it's got to be straight. No, I've done. It's pushed down now, can't change it. Oh, right. it's so anarchy so with this ruler. <laughs> You're so mean. I'm going to take, <laughs> it's it's take my tassel home. Pom -pom. Where's the tassel? I'm going to take it home. <laughs> I'm sorry. So put it wherever you like. Yeah. It doesn't matter. You don't need it. a ruler. So put it wherever you like. Be crazy and get your ruler out. <laughs> <laughs> so push it down and then from the other side, lift it up and from the other side, you'll be able to poke it through. Be really, really careful because these are really sharp. So just be careful with your, with your fingers and just push that so all the little spiky bits come through. And then you can <laughs> stop laughing at me. I'm not laughing. <laughs> Sorry. Um, so you can use your fingers to push them over, but I find that really hurts. In a, <laughs> in a really pathetic, non-punk kind of way. <gasps> oh, this is brilliant. Ah, no tattoos, no extra piercings. No, I've got one extra piercing. <laughs> that was as far as it went. But be careful, it's, but, it is but, sharp. But it is sharp. I, in all honesty, it is sharp. And don't cut yourself. Uh, so I'll use the corner, the rounded end on my point turner to just push those ends over in a safety first kind when of way. When Zoe Quarter does punk, it's... <laughs> they choose the wrong person to come on and be punk. What a letdown. <laughs> what a disgrace. No, I love it. I love it. I love it. You want to do wherever you want, but just make sure However, it's measured. However, do it within the rules. Like Monica. <laughs> you friends. are like Monica. Oh, but let's good at cooking. So then you would randomly place your next star using a ruler. <laughs> <laughs> I did, it, you know what? It didn't even occur to me at home that I wasn't being punk about it at all. <laughs> it's just like, no, no, you must put them nicely. Look, see? Then then all in a nice line. <laughs> Go on, please do it. Hannah's desperate to put like a tag along. So cool, it's punk hour. <laughs> and then we can see Victoria measuring it perfectly. Measuring. Oh dear. But I bet a lot of them struggled actually to let go when we are used yes, to it. Yes, and some of the, some of them did. It was a bit oh too restrained. Random, I find hard, just generally random things. Yeah, and you know what, I think if you're making a bag and, and, you, a and, you, and you want, an, but if you want to nod to punk, yeah. then you they get and, the ruler. And it does, and you spend time making something and you spent your money. Oh, something I should mention is that every now and then on the, on the little, um, the studs, the prongs that go through, some of them don't go totally upright in the air. And I'm not sure how we'll be able to see this, but one of them sort of sticks outwards at an angle. This one here is going out that way. The, rebe the rebellion. See, rather than straight okay. up. So just make sure, just push them in so that they're going straight up, because otherwise when you stick them in, they'll pull the fabric. Right. So just make sure that they're all facing upwards before you go. Do you like these stars? They're great, aren't they? Bags, purses, clothes, embellishments. And stars, you're right, lovely. on a clutch, they would be really yeah. nice. Loads yeah. and loads of them. The, um, and they're actually a lot easier to attach than I thought they were. They're going really, to be. really simple. Or... No, no. <laughs> oh, be careful, be careful. Like I say, just use your, your back of your point turner to just push those little ends in. That really hurt. <laughs> such a baby <laughs> my girls always Sorry, say to me laughing. how how much does it hurt to have your ears pierced because I, I think they're kind of thinking oh that would be nice and I said oh no it hurts yeah. a lot it really really hurts oh well I won't have them done then <laughs> oh. but my friend is Spanish and she said um, she gave birth in Tenerife because that's where her family are from and she said they come round the, the hospital in the maternity wards asking if you want your baby's ears pierced. What? I know, it's good. If, to us, that seems really crazy, but over there, they all thought she it's was mad not to. Because she said, you know, I live in England. She'd given birth in Tenerife. But she said, I live in England. And she said, people would just look at you 
strangely for piercing your baby's yeah. ears and you know people are all different aren't they but um yeah different cultures yeah. but all my different. my two i've said no you've got to wait until you're at least in secondary school I've yeah said, i think it, i was it, about 13 or 40 I think. you know what i did though this will make you laugh even more because i fainted you fainted oh my word <laughs> yeah, afterwards i was like oh yeah that hurt quite a lot and i passed out <laughs> oh gosh <laughs> Oh You've dear. had two children. I have. I did really well. I didn't <laughs> faint once. Oh, I, yeah, I might have Lucy, done once. Lucy, morning, ladies. Love you too. Giggling away at home. Great project today. Perfect day. When you're not feeling well, oh, I hope you feel better. Come on holiday with me, Lucy. I hope you have a great holiday. Yeah, jealous of the holiday. I haven't even started to think about it. I haven't got my suitcase out. See, you'd hate to live with me because I'm really unorganised at this point. Oh, I pack early. It's part of the fun. Yeah, well, I haven't got. My, I'll go tomorrow. I haven't even. What time so tomorrow? Anything. I don't leave till three o'clock in oh, the afternoon, it's so loads that's of time. fine. Leave or fly? Um, no, I'm not telling you because I don't want to scare you. No, I leave. <laughs> By the way, yeah, I'll, in any minute I'll, you'll be saying, right, what's your address? I'm going to come I'm over. I'm going to come pack. over and just make sure you've got everything. <laughs> you've had all your jabs. Right. Yes, I've had so my there jabs. we have a nice, neat row of of stars. If, however, <laughs> you want to go crazy, then just put them anywhere does not compute and then now we're going to create a bit of a quilt sandwich oh actually no we're not I'm just going to mark up first of all and then I'm going to quilt it so do you want to do recap and then come yeah, back for that absolutely or? yeah oh and I can show you that then afterwards come on over with us come on over oh I don't need a book um so We've got some inspiration, um, which we've taken from the quilted bags and gifts. Well, Victoria's used the dimensions to be able to create this bag, but the actual picture of the front of the bag on the, um, they've clipped it around the front. I really like it on the inside. It's very designer-esque, isn't it? It does remind me of a very famous design bag, but that's how they've done it. When it's filled out, obviously it will sit a lot better. Um, but I like it the way Victoria's done it. So the inspiration is from the book. £12.99 with great instructions. It's got 36 classic quilted projects. So you've got bags, you've got gifts in there, all sorts. It's a really popular book. Hence why we haven't bundled it, because we're going all punk, aren't we? So go for it. If you love the kits, maybe you've already got um, a bit of inspiration for them or, or a thought of what you want to do with them. We'll go with the one that Victoria's made up already, which is the blue and green. Um, that's your blue and green. You get one metre. <laughs> Half a metre of your PU as well. You then have your thread, you get your snap hook and you get your D-rings. You also will get your poly wadding, which we're nipping, we're, we're coming on to um, the next part with Victoria. And you can achieve... Da -da 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 -da. Oh, I love it. It's great, isn't it, in this colourway? And PU, there you go. Don't be put off. You saw how easy that was to work with. Um, the red. Your red tartan, you get a metre, so plenty of fabric to have a real good play around with. Half a metre of your red PU, which is 50% viscose and 50% PU. Your thread, your D-rings, your snap hook and your poly wadding, £27.99 for your full kit. And then the one that Victoria is working with is the one with the black base, which again, I really, really like. Oh, we have got handles, by the way. If you've asked about handles, we can show you those in a second. Um, you get a metre of your tartan, your check. Half a metre of your PU, thread, snap hook and D-rings. Ah, uh, okay, just so you know, this one is coming up close behind the blue kit as well. So if you love them, go for it, check out. You also get your poly wadding, your craft polyester wadding, 27.99. Now, the accessories bundle that we were just talking about is this one. So you have 12 of your star studs in a pack, which, again, 
really lovely and easy to attach to your garment or your bag or whatever you're attaching them to. I'd buy a couple of packets of those. They're brilliant. We're going to do those individually in a second. Upcycling as well. Um, they're your pyramid clips and you get 30 in that pack. You're also going to get your massive pack of safety pins. And your chain, which isn't the bag chain, it's just a, it's like a decorative chain. So there's no sort of swivel clip on the end. It is just going to be a decorative chain. Everything there in the bundle for £16.99. Um, if you want the studs separately, you get 30 studs. Hannah wants 30 studs in a pack. There you go. Your pyramids, two and two pounds ninety-nine, and then the stars. I would multi-buy on this one because I think this would be great on a purse, just to stud across the whole of the um, the flap on your purse. That would look so nice, wouldn't it? Or on a cap, even. I've seen lovely caps. That would not on the cap, no. Victoria thought I said on the cap, no. On the cap. Or on, um, you could even do like a choker necklace with them on, couldn't you? How are thinking more sort of country and western? I'm thinking punk, we're in the punk mood. She's doing country and western now. Two pounds, 99. Now handles, those of you that have just been asking about handles, we've got three different options. Um, red, blue and black. Which one should we go for first? Blue, which is the ones that have been used here on the bag. Obviously, you can make your own handles, but this is an option. Really lovely and sturdy. Two handles, obviously. They're artificial leather. Uh, they've got the pre-punched holes as well. So you can just simply hand stitch those on with ease. 60 centimetre handle, which is actually the perfect size to also just put onto your shoulder. There is an additional option to make a shoulder strap, clip it on if you want a longer handle, but that's your um, shoulder strap. We also have the red, or oh, red, black. I love these anyway. I know so many people that um, have made, I've seen on the Sewing Quarter fan page, this will go with my dress, artificial leather. Lots of people who have made um, bags I've seen with red handles and they look amazing. Yeah, a couple of Sashko designs with red handles. I've seen them on the Sewing Quarter fan page and they look gorgeous. $15.99, they're by Prim as well, so really lovely quality. And then black, which is again uh, your faux leather, not real leather. Pre-punched holes, again by Prim for $19.99. Oh no, hang on, these ones are, these ones are leather, sorry. The other ones are faux. This one is real leather handles. They're 53 centimetres long, so slightly shorter handle than the other two. Still have that pre-punched hole, but just to reiterate, the other two are faux. These ones are leather handles. £19.99. OK. Come on, let's go back over to the punk who is Victoria. <laughs> <laughs> right, we're doing what are we now? <laughs> Quitting. I don't know what's happened to today. <laughs> I'm letting the side down. <laughs> no, you're not. No, you're not. You're so punk. I love when you measure things so precisely. <laughs> so I'm now using my ruler again. OK. <laughs> of course. <laughs> to be wild and crazy. To mark some irregular quilting lines. <laughs> so I would like the quilting lines to be even and nice and lovely. <laughs> So I'm taking my quilting ruler in a 45 degree line and placing that against the seam line between the base and the upper section. And I want the quilting lines to come down and hit the middle of this central stripe so it's all balanced and lovely and nice. <laughs> and I'm going to use my hero marker to run along against um, the side of the ruler. That does leave a really good crease, doesn't it? leaves a really it? good crease, a really good line to follow and it doesn't just bounce back out, which is nice. And then you want the next one to go um, in the same place. So you've still got your 45 degree line. And you'll be able to see under this light somewhere. Um, that is, 
Oh, that's a half inch ruler. Let's go the other way around and I can tell you how far apart those are. Go about 10 so minutes. So that is yeah. two and a quarter inches between the lines. So again, we'll do that and just try and see, I can't, I can't talk anymore. Try, no, and, try no, and make I'm sure the lines are parallel. <laughs> <laughs> nice and even. Well, I like this ruler because it's got a two and a quarter inch line marked. Welcome to the pug cow, by the way. Everything everyone. I say is Our just the to opposite. Pug I can't talk. And then we want the lines going the other way. Like you say, though, I think it would, it would, I don't think I'd be very good at just doing random lines on it. I You're just would being want. polite now. No, I would struggle as well. Well, like I said, if you're going to make a bag, it's not a quick make, it's not a throwaway make. No. It's something that you want to be able to keep and use. And I don't know, I just think if you go too crazy, yeah, you might go, mm, can't believe I did that. <laughs> <laughs> An insight into my brain. <laughs> The marking tool that Victoria is using, the hero marker, um, which, again, those those marks, if you, it's not like a chalk or anything like that. Those marks that you can see are simply just sort of creases that are in the in the fabric, but they last longer than you think. So if you are marking out quilt patterns and you put it away, then they they won't just disappear straight away, will they? No, it's a really good ind indentation that it makes. Very traditional tool, actually, isn't it? Very handy. And a couple more lines, and then we'll make a little quilt sandwich that, um, like you say, the H640 would work really nicely as well. Okay. There are your lines marked. And for this, I've just going to stick in a couple of pins. So you've cut it just about an inch or so around the yeah, edge? Yeah, just really roughly cut. Did you? I did, I promise. <laughs> I just hacked away with some scissors. It's amazing. It's crazy. So wild. My mum does actually say to me, she said, sometimes you just need to loosen up a bit and just, oh. you know, go with it. See, see what happens. Yes, mum. No, no. <laughs> see, even the way that you're putting in the pins. I oh, no, just... <laughs> <laughs> crying. <laughs> I'll put one a different way if you oh, like. Oh, that's going to annoy ego. you. So look, bad. See, look, three different ways of pins. Oh, look at me. <laughs> Here you go, if you're watching, Mum. <laughs> oh, dear. All right. It's getting stuck on the foot. And then I'm just going to increase my stitch length a touch. Do we need I'm a walking foot? I'm going to go to a three and a half. Um, I would... I would generally opt for the walking foot. I think you do a little bit of a test and just see if your machine is quite happy. It's not a big, thick thing that you're quilting, so you might be absolutely fine. See, lots of our bag makers leave the... I know Becky alexander Frost. she says she just leaves her walking foot on all the time. It's yeah, I tend to have either a walking foot on or a zipper foot on, yeah. um, sometimes an edge stitch or a blind hem foot for all sorts of bits and pieces I find those really useful. If you are doing a lot more sort of quilting and bag making then it is something that may be worth looking into investing into if you don't have one. We do have them selling separately on the website. Um, if you go onto the web and you go to the category which is called machines, is it called machines? Machines and um, I could have a look, oh I can have a look. So machines and accessories is the actual category name. There is a walking foot option on there, which has the category of machine that it fits with. You just have to check your machine at home. Sorry, I was just being precise. <laughs> <laughs> and just make sure you don't sew over your pins. No. Okay. I've seen somewhere as well, is it sometimes called an even feed foot? Yes, this is called an automatic something foot. 
Why can't I think? But yes, they're even feed foot or a walking foot. Right. They've got different names. A few different names. They're the most sort of commonly used names. What, how long? About, about five minutes. Okay, we'll just quilt along. That's one thing about the sewing bee when I watch it. I do just get so anxious that I don't know how they do it. I don't know whether how much is of it is, is you know, for TV where they're like, three you know, minutes. No, I think, it is I think they genuinely do have um, those, those amounts of time. Really short time periods to create things. And like I said in the previous hour, you know, most of that time I would spend cutting out the pattern and cutting out the fabric. Oh, tough job. They're doing so well though, they're really, really good this year, aren't they? They are super, absolutely super. I'll say, I was about to say, are you on with Charlotte anytime soon? But you're not, are you? No, I'm not. I don't know when Charlotte's back next, actually. I think she's in next week. Well, it's more I that you're on a... holiday. Oh, yeah? Mm -hmm. oh, I keep getting, like, nervous that I've got so much... <laughs> Pardon? Yeah, with my travel bear. Oh. And are you going with friends? Yeah, friends and family. So um, oh, Kieran's mum's coming and his auntie, and then a couple of my friends are coming as well. So. Oh, nice. <laughs> so I'm just going backwards and forwards, and I'm not cutting my threads every time. I'm just going and holding the threads and moving on to the next line. Anything on the bottom of yours? Are you all? It's not catching in your feet. Um, it, it catches a little bit, but once you start going, it's it's absolutely fine. Okay. These, um, this walking foot is absolutely super. But if you found it was, you could just use like a muslin or a fine cotton on the underside just to give you that sort of extra layer. Muslims on the website, by the way, as well. It is going to be lined, though, as well, isn't it? Yes, it's going to be lined. And again, if you wanted to, you could create extra stability by interfacing the lining or use an extra layer of wadding or um, the styleville, any other option. It's up to you. It, and it depends on how stiff you want your bag. And you had something on with Becky the other day um, that you could use for bag bases. Is oh, the Becky interlining. Or? Yeah, you've got that. And do we sell the plastic as well that you yeah, could cut yeah, to size to plastic. slide in to create a more firm base? Or even the um, prim template plastic. Yes, yeah, that would do it as well. The tough thing is, the great thing, obviously... We wanted to put together a bundle um, that is quite versatile. You'll be able to go with whatever you want. Maybe you've already got a particular pattern that you thought, ah, oh, this is the perfect fabric for it. We've used the dimensions from the book, uh, which the book in a second will be running across the bottom of the screen. Um, so the dimensions are from this, but it's absolutely up to you on what design you want to do. Lots of inspiration in here. Go wild, be creative. <laughs> But remember, it, it's got to be symmetrical and measured out properly. Don't go too crazy. Oh, oh, attached. Got the threads attached. What have I done now? Just hooks the threads around. So there you go. There's a matching front and back for your bag. Amazing. So I would just then, um, I would trim that down and then I would baste along here just to make sure that that's attached properly to okay. that. And then it makes it easier to come and sew these two together. And I would then sew down the side seams to create like a round tube. Mm -hmm. And then from there you would attach your base. Is it which a is a rectangle. Lining? Um, the pattern isn't, she, she has quite an unusual way of making bags where you, um, you have the lining as one piece, but you cut the lining bigger. So you yeah. trim this down and then you'd cut your lining bigger and then she wraps the lining over the seam allowances. Yeah. It's a really clever, really oh, pretty to technique the, to hide all your seams. Oh, I think we've done that before, haven't we? Um, with, I think it was with Charlotte, actually. We've oh, gone right, over okay. that before, so. Yeah, and I think I covered it off. I did another one of her patterns, but it wasn't in this book. 
Right, I, don't I think, think there's two think books. Was, yeah, I yeah. think it was in the yeah. other book, and I'd done. A, I think it was a hexi bag, and it's a really pretty, really lovely way to line a bag. Uh, oh. It's really nice, but this one in particular, I just did a drop-in lining. Brilliant. Okay. Quicker. Um, and in terms of all the other bits and pieces, how long have we got? Have we got a minute. Yeah, go on. So I've attached the um, the extra studs. I, mm -hmm. I attached those on before I hand stitched the um, the handles on, and the little tabs I've made um, from strips of the um, of the PU, which I've done. Um, I've actually used the waistband shaping oh, yeah, that that's we've really used good, before, and I know Debbie Von Grabler Crozier uses them a lot. So I've done that, and to attach these on here, but you could do that and you could attach your parts of your chain you could put through um, through on the sides to create a bit of an extra feature yeah. like you say you wouldn't use this chain as, as your you bag strap. strap it's probably a bit thin yeah. for a bag of this size because once you've got that full that's going to cut in and be a bit but a bit hard. also embellish away with the um, the bundle which is you have a bundle going across the screen now it's 16.99 for your chain your studs um, and your safety pins as well. Now, you are going to come back and have a chat with me in the next hour, aren't you? Just a little chat. Because I actually saw it was on your Facebook. Um, I think I saw before I even knew that I was doing the show that you oh, said, really? we're getting these on so quarter. Oh. You have a K&L. Yes, I do. Don't you? Yeah, I and do, you've had and I really it for love it. a couple of years, haven't you? A couple of years. <gasps> Not long. <laughs> You've had it since you were at college. Yeah, yeah, I had it. Yeah, I bought it at university. Oh, it's oh. absolutely amazing as well. That we have it um, with the sewing quarter branding as well, with our very own stamp stenciled on, um, which is just incredible. So we'll talk more about the obviously iconic brand that is KL um, in the next hour with Victoria. So thank yeah, you very, very much. We'll see you. Um, we'll see you in see a, in a bit minute. Then. I'll thank tidy you. Up. Um, let's Just have a tidy quick up, recap. You know. <laughs> Gonna tidy up. Come on, keep it punk. Keep it punk. So, the bag is made out of this colourway, which is the one that Victoria made, which is gorgeous, isn't it? Very kind of Vivian Westwood esque. I love it. Uh, you've got your blue and green style check, which is called Black Watch. You get one metre of this one. You also have, thank you, half a metre of your PU. You get your D rings. You get your snap hook, you get your thread, and your poly wadding for £27.99. And, and that is to create this lovely bag. And then the next one, which Victoria uh, was making, was this colourway. And as we said, you may already have a bag book that you want to create something with or want to just go for it. If you love this bundle, make most of it. The book that Victoria's used, the quilted bags and gifts, we'll put along the bottom where she got her dimensions and sizes and took inspiration. It's not essential though, so we haven't put it in the kit. You've got a metre of your um, check, you've got half a metre of your black PU, your thread, your um, snap hook, D rings, and poly wadding, 27.99. And then the red, exactly the same but different fabric. So you get a metre of your red check, um, lovely sort of tartan look, very iconic in the punk scene. Half a metre of your red PU, 50% viscose and 50% PU, your snap hook, your D rings, and your thread, as well as your poly wadding for $27.99. The book is running across the bottom of the screen. Um, the handles, as well, are going to be underneath us on the website. Accessories bundle. In the accessory bundle, you get the chain, which we were just talking about. Probably too fine to use as a, a bag chain handle for the size of the bag, but great for embellishing. Your safety pins, of course. Your star studs. And your pyramid studs. So the star studs, you get 12, and the pyramids ones, you get 30. The studs are also available separately, so if you do want the star studs to stay on their own, um, or you want to add more of those, because they are great, you get 12 in the pack, but you can add more for just 2 99 I think they are. £2.99. They're on the, um, they're on the, uh, underneath us on the web anyway. So we're just going to have a couple of minutes longer break because we're getting ready for an hour that is going to go down in our history books. We are very excited to be looking close, up close and personal. It's been here in the studio the last um, couple of 
weeks, months. We've had them, we've had it for about a, a month now, haven't we? And everybody's been messaging about it. Those of you that love dressmaking, you obviously already know k &L. If you don't know about k &L, take the next couple of minutes to have a quick look, but be back with us where we will be launching our k &L very own mannequin right after this. We've got some exciting news. Sewing Quarter are delighted to announce that we now have our very own app, available for download on all iOS and Android devices. Simply go to the App Store or Google Play and search Sewing Quarter. Once you've downloaded the app, you'll be able to watch Sewing Quarter live 24 hours a day and purchase all the products on today's show. So download the app today and keep watching Sewing Quarter on the move. 